Testing, testing. Testing. So I'm Rachel Mars. I'm Nat Tarab. And we have a company imaginatively titled Mars Tarab. Um, and we are working on Roller, which is the show which is form, falls under the Oxford Samuel Beckett Theatre Trust award bracket this year. We began with an exploration of Roller Derby, which we were invited into as a kind of uh, inquiry into how come could there be a cross fertilization between theatre and roller derby? It feels like as we interrogated that, what we looked at was female aggression, um, age, and what's the line between aggression and violence? Um, what is this sport where women slam into each other on roller skates and why do they do that? What's kind of underneath that? What's happening for them in their bodies, in their psyches, that this is a thing that they do with a massive amount of passion? There are no skaters who play roller derby like that. They all love it. I think those those explorations um, kind of were are fed by the the current re-emerging of the male person in power as predator or as impinger on the female space that which feels like it's been supercharged and in the news since we've been really reconnecting with it and then looking at roller derby through that and going oh yeah look um you know here's a female only space and and here's women exploring their aggression and being really clear about their boundaries and so i think those two things have woven together it's become a kind of really helpful and quite charged metaphor for preparation for the world outside of the sports hall um, and notions of doing something again and again and again and again to relearn your instinctive response to something. Whenever we get, to, we always, we're quite last minute and that's just part of the process. So the, the bulk of the make always happens like up against the opening of the show. Mm. Um, and we always therefore are in a different kind of political and social environment in the bulk of the make than we were three years ago. There's always a kind of re-shuntling yeah. of focus on what are we saying, why are we saying it now, why are we saying it, um, what are we asking. So we spent yesterday thinking about the word revolution and how it's in the sound, it's revolutions per minute, which means going round. And we we're like, oh, when is a revolution a cycle and when is it progress? Um, or when is it breaking a circle? What felt useful was uh, the echoes of it. So you, they, they skate revolutions. There are revolutions in minutes in music. Um, there are loops within the body, the kind of top note of which is the idea that we want to lead the world into revolution. Yeah. So that our response, I think that our theatrical response to the Harvey Weinstein et al. Um, rising up in recent media events feels like... What then? What then? And actually, no, not what then. We've got the what. And it's revolution. Mm. There needs to be a revolution. I don't think we're ever going to say feminism. I don't think we have to. It's a stage full of women talking yeah. about violence and aggression and the difference and the revolution and, and what you can learn from smashing women down and being and rising up again in a kind of consenting, rule-driven way. I love it because a lot of people are intolerant of feminists and I'm like, well, I'm intolerant of people who aren't. Feminists. Thank you very much. Is it this, this feminazi word is an interesting yeah, one because that, like that was not in my... Give it. I'll have that. And I'm feminazi this. The feminist killjoy. The feminist killjoy. Genius. So the feminist killjoy feels like she lives very strongly in the piece and also in our lives, I think, at the moment. So we've been investigating the position of the one who stands up and says, no, this is not all right, or uh, that's not funny, or mm, what was, how do you justify that, what you are saying, uh, and all of those, and how she gets to be the problem rather than the problem being noticed and paid attention to as a problem, because then you get to be the feminist killed, or you get to be uh, on your soapbox, or you, it's where I spent the whole of my university career. Um, there's been a lot of anger in our rehearsal room, a lot of aggression, and then, uh, an arising in you towards violence. I'm just super into the idea of smashing someone in the face oh, at the moment. 
There was a line in the in the work in progress about being exhausted by the act of smashing someone in the face, not exhausted by the effort it takes not to smash them in the face. And that's true for the silence as well. That's one of the things in the feminist I killjoy think that might be article. The, same, the first time we said silence. Ah, I silence. Think, yeah. We're not said silence yet. No, but I think it's relevant. Say mm. it louder. Uh, yeah, we've been thinking about silence because of the last couple of weeks and because of voices and making your voice heard. The same sort of thing. It is exhausting to maintain a silence. And it's sort of deliberate that the power structures know that it is exhausting to maintain a silence. So the very people that should be speaking up are exhausted by the, the act of having to remain silent. Feminism is, I mean, it's just there all the time, isn't it? It's a female identifying team top to bottom. And that feels like if you are given a chunk of money, a chunk of stage time, why would you not give it to female identifying people, especially in this industry at the moment? It feels like if the only thing that the show does, and hopefully it will do many other things, but if the only thing that it does is if we invite some other women up with us to that place and that we all get to have a voice there, that feels like, done. <laughs> we'll just all sit on the stage going, we're having a voice. <laughs> Thanks. So what is the revolution? What is the revolution? It's a question, isn't it? Mm. Can't we see the show. <laughs>